So yeah, second time uh, playing in the World Juniors. Tell me about your reaction to cracking the team. Yeah, it's obviously really cool. Um, whether it's your first time, second time, um, it doesn't really matter. Every time you get a chance to represent your country, um, especially at a tournament as big as World Juniors, it's it's an awesome feeling. And uh, this year they kind of did a cool thing without uh, having fans or our families here. They they got your family to FaceTime you and, and tell you that's how you made the team. So it was obviously a cool moment to um, share with my family. And um, yeah, it's obviously exciting. Awesome. Yeah, I saw that. It's really nice that they, it was a really nice touch for this year. Um, you've probably been asked about this ad nauseum, so I apologize if you've already answered this question, but um, this is obviously a dream come true for you. I'm sure World Juniors is a holiday tradition, just like uh, everyone else, but uh, what is your favorite, I guess, your favorite World Juniors memory growing up? Um, I think for me, it's just every Boxing Day and in New Year's Eve game. That's kind of a big one for my family. We'd all um, no matter the time, we'd all wake up and watch the games, whether it's in the morning or at night. So uh, it's just cool to ex experience that with your family. And uh, growing up with two younger brothers and a couple older siblings as well, um, we we're big hockey people and uh, just following the World Juniors every year. And then now that I have the opportunity to represent the country and play in the World Juniors, it's it's really cool. And um, I'm happy to experience that with my family. Great. Um, so as someone who's uh, been through this tournament already, how are you hoping to take on a leadership role this year? Yeah, I remember last year talking to guys like Barrett Hayden and, and guys that were returning. Um, it was cool to just bounce questions off them and um, kind of get your, your nerves calmed down a bit, um, just asking questions about the previous tournament. So um, I know that this year a lot of guys have been asking about how the tournament was last year, and we've been telling stories about games and stuff. So um, it's cool having that experience and, uh, bringing a little of experience to the locker room and, and just helping the guys feel more comfortable for sure. Great. Uh, I know the coach has uh, talked about how impressed he is with your versatility and kind of the expectation that you're going to be able to play uh, any role up front. Uh, what do you feel you bring to this team most? Yeah, kind of kind of what Bear touched on, um, that I can play any role. Um, I mean, we got a lot of skilled players. I think we got 20 first rounders this year. So um, there's a lot of guys from their club's teams that um, are used to playing the same role as each other. And um, just coming here, um, like I said, 20 first rounders, you got to kind of adapt to different roles. And I think I'm, I'm a guy that can adapt to different roles pretty easily. So um, I'm glad I have the trust from Bear and um, he feels comfortable playing me in different situations. I know this tournament's obviously going to be a very different one, but uh... How much does playing on home soil, you know, not having to deal with any major time zone shifts, how much does that help with confidence? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, last year we flew over to Czech Republic. Um, I don't know exactly the time difference, but um, it's a few hours for sure. And uh, just flying over to Alberta, it's uh, two hours behind Eastern time. So it's not it's not bad. And obviously you feel more comfortable just being in your own country. So um, I think it's an advantage for us, for sure, even without the fans. So. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Great. Uh, well, obviously, you're no stranger to the bubble lifestyle, having been in the Toronto bubble in the summer with the Capitals. Um, so far, you know, having to quarantine uh, those two weeks, and now you're in kind of another quarantine. What would you say are the best parts and the worst parts about uh, being in quarantine and being in the bubble? Yeah, I think the worst parts are just um, being away from your family and of course the fans and, and the arena and and just like your teammates when you're isolated in your own room you can't hang around your teammates too much and um, you just miss going to the rink but um, I think the best part is you're able to pick up new hobbies um, you're just trying to stay sane watching Netflix um, some guys are reading books uh, doing puzzles on their phones and 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 Team Canada has been great with us doing zoom calls and um, bringing on some special guests for us and stuff so um, it hasn't been as bad as I expected and um, I mean, we're having a lot of fun. We're just looking forward to the tournament. Have you picked up any new hobbies? <laughs> uh, not really, honestly. Um, I brought a couple books, uh, so I've been reading a little bit, but uh, nothing too crazy. More just um, just watching some TV shows and Netflix. Awesome. And I know you kind of alluded to this on uh, one of the media availabilities earlier, but uh, having having gone through the bubble lifestyle already in the summer kind of kind of helped you prepare for doing it all again, right? Yeah, you kind of know what to expect. Um, when I was going to Toronto, you don't really know what it's going to be like. And um, you're almost a little bit nervous that um, you won't have things to do and you'll be a little bit bored. But 
uh, coming here, I knew what to expect and it helped a lot for sure and uh, helped me prepare to, to pack things I might need. 